Good happy Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First step, two teens injured after car strikes tree in Marlboro. Two teenagers were injured injured one seriously when their car struck a tree in Marlboro Friday night, police said. Marlboro police responded to a single vehicle crash on Stone Pond Road at 10.11 p.m. Jennifer Smiley, 17 of Marlboro, had been driving when the car left the roadway and crashed into the tree, police said. Hannah Moffat, 17 of Keene, was also in the car and was transported to Dartmouth Hitchcock Medical Center by helicopter with serious injuries, officials said. Smelly was evaluated at Chester Medical Center in Keene and released, officials said. The cause of the crash remains under investigation, but police believe speed may have been a contributing factor in the crash. Korean War POW shares story for first time. Let's take a listen to this video from WMUR News 9. Friday right here all month long. The all new 2017 Hyundai Elantra SE for only $99 a month. And the all new 2017 Hyundai Santa Fe Sport for only $179 a month at Nashua Hyundai. The Thompson Auto. <coughs> Eight-year-old Phil Anderson plays chess with his great-grandson inside the Barrington home he built for his family more than 40 years ago. With his daughter at his side, he shows us his favorite hat. I got my American flag. And on this Veterans Day, this Korean War veteran and former prisoner of war shares the story of his captivity for the first time. After all these years, saying out loud, I was there. I was there. Seldom talk about this, you know. I, in fact, they don't even know. The details he spared his five children finally come out through the tears. <laughs> in fact, I went through five POW camps from when I first got captured. He says on a bright night, surrounded by Chinese soldiers, he tried to hide with several U.S. soldiers. We crawled in a little cave, which was, I don't know why I'm not dead. He was captured and spent more than two years as a POW. Until you lose them, the city up the hill and they shoot you. I'm every morning. They were taking soldiers to Barrow. I had made up my mind I wasn't going to let those people kill me. You know, I was going to survive. Peace talks brought Phil home. He went on to join the Air Force, settle his family in New Hampshire while stationed at the Peace Air Base, and served nearly 25 years, only now sharing the darkest ones. This is the first time I, I knew how long he was actually there and and th th I can feel the pain that he feels right now. Once you get it out, I think that helps. And this veteran says his patriotism has never wavered. If I get called today, I'll go. Really. Old as I am, I, I would go. In Barrington, Gene Mackin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report and 
That was a very touching story. What a Trump cabinet might look like. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Friday night, and what a week it's been here in America. The election is over, but inside Trump Tower tonight, the next administration is just beginning. And this evening, we're on the inside, as we learn many of the names and faces who could be on board in this administration. The president-elect out of sight at Trump Tower today, but the trucks were not, filled with sand there, a protective barrier now outside. So many key names seem heading in, Rudy Giuliani among them, the two posts he could be up for. And Ivanka Trump, her husband, her brothers, all of them involved in shaping the next White House. But already some breaking headlines, Donald Trump's tweets as president-elect. And on Obamacare, his new comments tonight, will it stay alive under President Trump? ABC's Tom Yamas leading us off. Tonight, Trump Tower, a fortress, armed police out front. The president-elect inside, surrounded by his core team. His White House now taking shape. 24 hours ago, Trump's visit to the Obama White House going off without a hitch. And I look forward to being with you many, many more times in the future. Thank you, sir. Returning to his Manhattan skyscraper, Trump seemed pleased. Really good meeting, he tweeted. Great chemistry. But as night fell, the mood at Trump Tower growing dark. On the sidewalk outside and in cities across the country, Protesters taking to the streets to denounce the president-elect. We reject the president-elect. Trump, keenly aware of it all, and at 9.19 p.m., firing off this angry tweet, presidential election. Love the fact that the small groups of protesters, Kellyanne Conway, now a senior advisor, meeting me inside. A lot of people said you weren't going to win. Well, right, but they don't work here. And uh, <laughs> Conway telling me Vice President-elect Mike Pence is now taking over the transition, replacing embattled New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who will assume a lesser role. As for who will make up the Trump cabinet, Conway is tight-lipped. Yeah, there are a number of people being talked about for different jobs. Ultimately, that's, that's Donald yeah. Trump's decision. Today, we're learning Trump's children, Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, will play a big role in that decision. All three now named to the transition team, helping to build their father's administration, even as they prepare to take over the family business. During the campaign, they promised to keep a strict separation between the two. And we'll act incredibly responsibly. This is so much bigger than another deal, and, and we all recognize that. We're not going to be involved in government. But now we know the Trump family will, in fact, be deeply involved in shaping the Trump White House shortlist for White House Chief of Staff. Can you see Jared Kushner and Ivanka leaving New York for Washington, D.C.? Well, Jared and Ivanka are brilliant. It's a very personal decision what people do and how they, they feel they can best serve within the context of their own personal relationships. But at the same time, it's difficult to resist that tug for almost anyone. Among the big names for Rudy Giuliani, spotted at Trump Tower today. I have no expectation. All I do is give my advice. Giuliani, a former federal prosecutor, certainly sounds interested in being attorney general. I serve the Justice Department better than me. Um, Rudy Giuliani is also under consideration for another top job. That's right, David. Rudy Giuliani's loyalty to Donald Trump may eventually pay off. We hear not only is he be considered for attorney general, but also secretary of state. David, Tom Yama is leading us off on a Friday night. Okay, and there you go on that report. Mm. Anti-Trump Trump po protest spread across nation. Thousands took the streets of cities across the United States late Friday and early Saturday as anti-Donald Trump protests saw highways and interstates blocked, numerous arrests, and a shooting at a march in Portland, Oregon. 
And now let's take a look at your event calendar for your Saturday and see what kind of events are happening today in New Hampshire. Bring a friend shopping weekend at 8 o'clock a.m. in North Conway. New Hampshire Coin and Currency Expo at 10 o'clock a.m. in Manchester. Craft Fair and Raffle at 9 o'clock a.m. in Nashua. Christmas Fair at United Church at 9 o'clock a.m. in Pennacook. Main Street United Methodistsy Yalotted Fair at 9 o'clock in Nashua. Author Jennifer Vaughn with her thriller Thrown Away Girls at 2 o'clock p.m. In Concord. Christmas at the Falls. Let it snow at 10 o'clock a.m. in Newberry. Three centuries of Thanksgiving in interactive walking tour at 10 o'clock a.m. in Portsmouth. Friends in Action ex Photo Exhibit, My View, at 10 o'clock a.m. in Portsmouth. East Coast Angels Holiday Fair at 9 o'clock a.m. in Concord. Basket Weaving Workshop at 10 o'clock in Chicoka. Kiss Me Kate musical by Cole Potter at 8 p.m. in Wolfboro. And those are all the events happening today in New Hampshire. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your Saturday. See you back here later on today. Goodbye, everyone.